Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on digoxin. Introduction Digoxin and digitoxin are cardiac glycosides that are principally derived from the plants Digitalis purpurea and Digitalis lanata. They have both antiarrhythmic and inotropic properties. Digitalis compounds have been used for more than 200 years for the treatment of heart failure. However, they have been largely superseded and are now principally indicated for the control of ventricular rate in supraventricular arrhythmias, particularly atrial fibrillation. Structure Digoxin comprises of a cyclopentanophenantry nucleus, an A-glycone ring responsible for the pharmacological activity, and a carbohydrate chain made up of sugar molecules which aids in its solubility. Preparation Digoxin is available as oral tablets of 62.5 to 250 micrograms, oral elixir of 50 micrograms per mil, and IV preparations of 100 to 250 micrograms per mil. Pharmacokinetics of digoxin Absorption from the gut is variable and depends on the specific formulation used. Bioavailability is more than 70%. Peak serum time is 1 to 3 hours via oral route. Distribution Volume of distribution is 5 to 10 liters per kg. VD is large, thus effective plasma concentrations occur after about 5 to 7 days unless a loading dose is given. VD is increased in hyperthyroidism and reduced in hypothyroidism. Plasma protein binding is 25%. There is minimal hepatic metabolism and metabolites digoxygenin, bisdigitozoocyte and digoxygenin, monodigitozoocyte are active. Elimination. Digoxin is mostly eliminated unchanged by the kidneys by filtration at the glomerulus and active tubular secretion. Excretion in the urine is 57 to 80 percent, and in the feces is 9 to 13 percent, including the bowel. Reduced dosage in renal disease and in the elderly. Half life is about 35 hours, so maintenance doses may be required only on alternate days. Toxic effects are very persistent. Elimination is lengthy after termination of treatment. Half-life is inversely proportional to glomerular filtration rate. Half-life is increased significantly in renal failure. Pharmacodynamics Nicoxin binds and inhibits cardiac membrane sodium-potassium ATPase and inhibits sodium-potassium exchange. There is increased intracellular sodium concentration and this reduces the concentration gradient across the membrane Increased intracellular sodium concentration results in reduced driving force for sodium-calcium exchanger. This results in reduced extrusion of calcium into the extracellular space and increased free intracellular calcium. There is also reduced intracellular potassium. Effects on the heart In the conduction system, in the atria, there is reduced rate of phase 4 depolarization in the SA node and reduced automaticity. There is increased refractory period duration of AV node and bundle of His. There is increased action potential duration. In the ventricles, there is increased spontaneous depolarization rate and reduced refractory period duration. Increased ventricular excitability is more marked in the presence of hypokalemia, and this results in increased ectopic pacemaker foci. There is increased risk of arrhythmias, as there is increased resting membrane potential negative 70 mV instead of negative 90 mV and this increases excitability. The classic digoxin effect on ECG is prolonged PR interval, shortened QT interval, down-sloping reverse thick ST segment depression, T-wave inversion, and these changes may be wrongly interpreted as ischemia. Digoxin increases myocardial contractility by increasing intracellular calcium and increased local catecholamine concentrations. This is a graph of cardiac output versus ventricular and diastolic pressure. In the normal heart, point A is the normal operating point in a healthy heart. Within limits, stretching of the cardiac muscle increases the force of contraction and cardiac output. However, if ventricles are overly stretched, there is reduced force of contraction. In decompensated heart failure, initial reduction of contractility occurs and the point moves from A to B and symptoms of low cardiac output such as fatigue occurs. In compensated heart failure, there is increased ventricular and diastolic pressure, for example, due to increased sympathetic reflexes. 
and the curve moves from point B to point C to maintain adequate cardiac output. Increased ventricular and diastolic pressure results in symptoms of congestion such as dyspnea. In digoxin treatment, digoxin causes positive inotropy and the ventricular function curve shifts towards normal. Increased contractility shifts the point C to point D and there is increased cardiac output. This produces reduced sympathetic reflexes and vascular tone and reduced ventricular and diastolic pressure and the point moves from D to E. Effects of digoxin on the autonomic nervous system There is direct and indirect vagal effects, which is a long-term effect of digoxin. There is increased central vagal tone. This produces reduced heart rate and reduced myocardial oxygen demand. There is increased cardiac sensitivity to vagal stimulation, increased local myocardial concentrations of acetylcholine. Digoxin increases acetylcholine release at cardiac muscarinic receptors. This reduces conduction and increases the refractory period in the AV node and bundle of His. These effects may be partly antagonized by atropine. Digoxin produces reduced neuronal catecholamine reuptake and increased central sympathetic drive, and this increases local catecholamine concentrations and produces positive inotropic actions. Onset of action for oral digoxin is 0.5 to 2 hours for initial effect and 2 to 6 hours for maximal effect. Onset of action for IV digoxin is 5 to 30 minutes for initial effect and 1.5 to 4 hours for maximal effect. Duration of action of digoxin is 3 to 4 days. Indications for digoxin Digoxin is used for the treatment of atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, and heart failure. In AF, the atrial rate is too high to allow for a one-to-one -one ventricular response. Digoxin slows the conduction through the AV node. This reduces the rate of ventricular response and increases the period of coronary blood flow and ventricular filling, and this produces increased cardiac output. Atrial arrhythmias are difficult to treat if associated with hypermetabolic, such as hyperthyroidism, or hyperdynamic states, such as hypoxia. Treat the underlying condition before initiating digoxin therapy. Digoxin is not recommended alone for acute rate control in AF, as response to IV digoxin is slow and peak response can take over 6 hours to develop. But digoxin can be used with beta blockers in patients with compensated heart failure. Digoxin reduces hospitalization rates and symptoms due to severe cardiac failure, refractory to first-line treatment. Digoxin therapy is indicated in patients with severe reduced ejection fraction heart failure after initiation of ACE inhibitor, beta blocker and diuretic therapy. Digoxin is not indicated in patients with diastolic or right-sided heart failure unless the patient has concomitant AF. Digoxin's effect on mortality At low serum digoxin levels of 0.5 to 0.8 nanograms per mil, there is reduced mortality and hospitalization rates. However, at higher serum digoxin levels, there is increased mortality but reduced hospitalization rates. Initial effects of digoxin on cardiac output may not be sustained and other agents such as ACE inhibitors beta blockers and diuretics may produce a better outcome. Withdrawal of digoxin in clinically stable patients with heart failure may lead to recurrence of heart failure symptoms. Beriberi heart disease may not respond adequately if the underlying thiamine deficiency is not corrected. Dosage of digoxin The IV dose is IV 250 to 500 mcg over 10 to 20 minutes. Avoid fast injection as this may cause vessel constriction and coronary ischemia. The IV dose may be repeated after 6 to 12 hours as indicated. The oral dose, loading dose is 1 to 1.5 mg orally in divided doses over 24 hours or 250 to 500 mcg per day if less urgent. Maintenance dose is 62.5 to 500 micrograms per day. Usual range is 125 to 250 micrograms per day. Monitoring during digoxin administration includes vital signs, ECG, monitoring for proarrhythmic effects especially with digoxin toxicity, serum digoxin levels, and monitor for extravasation, which should be avoided. Dose modifications. The conversion factor from oral to IV digoxin is 0 0.67, i.e. 125 micrograms oral digoxin equals 80 micrograms IV digoxin. Renal dose. For creatinine clearance of 10 to 20 mL per minute, the dose 
is 125 to 250 micrograms per day. For creatinine clearance of less than 10 mils per minute, 62.5 micrograms digoxin on alternate days or 62.5 micrograms daily. In geriatric patients, use lean body weight to calculate the dose. Do not switch between different oral forms or between brands and generic forms of digoxin as bioavailability varies. Avoid rapid IV administration in digitalized patients as this may produce serious arrhythmias. IM injections are not recommended for digoxin as this produces variable absorption, pain and tissue necrosis. Contraindications and caution Acute myocardial infarction Digoxin may increase myocardial oxygen demand. During acute coronary syndrome, digoxin administered IV may be used to slow a rapid ventricular response and improve left ventricular function in the acute treatment of atrial fibrillation associated with severe LV dysfunction and heart failure or hemodynamic instability. Other cautions include ventricular fibrillation, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, as increased myocardial contractility intensifies the resistance to ventricular ejection, outflow obstruction may worsen due to positive inotropic effects of digoxin, constrictive pericarditis, hypersensitivity to digoxin, Pregnancy and lactation Experience with digoxin in pregnant women over several decades has not led to identification of a drug-associated risk of major birth defects, miscarriage or adverse maternal or fetal outcomes. However, digoxin can cross the placenta, thus monitor neonates for signs of digoxin toxicity, such as vomiting and cardiac arrhythmias. The digoxin dose received through breastfeeding is up to 4% of the neonatal maintenance dosage which is unlikely to be clinically relevant. There are no data on the effects of digoxin on the breastfed infant or effects on milk production. Adverse effects of digoxin includes dizziness, mental disturbances, diarrhea, headache, nausea, vomiting, maculopapular rash, anorexia, arrhythmias, visual disturbances, heart blocks, etc. Digoxin toxicity about 20% of patients who are being treated with cardiac glycosides experience some form of digitalis toxicity. Diagnosis Patients with digoxin toxicity may present with anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, arrhythmias such as extrasystole, bigemony, trigemony, various degrees of heart block, supraventricular arrhythmias, atrial or ventricular tachycardia, junctional rhythm, or almost any other arrhythmias. CNS effects include fatigue, agitation, nightmares, visual disturbances such as deranged red-green color perception, blood or yellow discoloration of vision, headache, delirium, malaise, gynecomastia, skin rashes, and hyperkalemia, which suggests severe toxicity. Regarding digoxin plasma levels, the timing of taking of blood levels is 1 hour after an IV dose and 8 hours after an oral dose. Therapeutic range is 0.5 to 2 nanograms per mil, with an ideal target of 0.5 to 1 nanograms per mil. The therapeutic index of digoxin is low. A dose of more than 30 mg is invariably associated with death, unless digoxin-specific antibody fragments are used. Toxicity is likely at plasma concentrations exceeding 2.5 nanograms per mil. Plasma digoxin concentration of less than 0.5 nanograms per mil eliminates the possibility of digoxin toxicity However, plasma concentrations are a poor guide to toxicity as digoxin is concentrated in cardiac and other tissues. Digoxin affects the ECG even at therapeutic plasma concentrations, causing repolarization abnormalities. The classic digoxin effect on ECG has been discussed. ECG changes are usually widespread and are not confined to the territory of one coronary artery and do not indicate toxicity. Digoxin may cause false positive ST changes during exercise testing. Prevention of digoxin toxicity Digoxin should be avoided in hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, hypercalcemia, ventricular extrasystoles or VT, second degree heart block, aberrant conduction pathways such as WPW syndrome, after myocardial infarction, altered pH, renal impairment, elderly, chronic pulmonary or heart disease, mixed edema or hypoxia. Hypokalemia increases myocardial binding of cardiac glycosides and this increases drug effects. The most frequent cause of digitalis toxicity 
in the absence of renal dysfunction is concurrent administration of diuretics that causes potassium depletion. Regarding VT, nigoxin may precipitate VF due to increased cardiac excitability. Regarding aberrant conduction pathways, AV block may encourage conduction through accessory pathways with resultant arrhythmias. Drug interactions with digoxin Several drugs may predispose to digoxin toxicity, such as beta blockers, as bradycardia and AV block may occur via additive effect with digoxin. Many drugs increases digoxin plasma levels and digoxin toxicity, such as amiodaron, non dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers, azoles, clarithromycin, HIV protease inhibitors, quinidine, captopril, erythromycin, carbonazolone, propafenone, etc. Loop or thiazide diuretics, amphotericin B, and corticosteroids may cause hypokalemia that potentiates digoxin toxicity. IV calcium may cause hypercalcemia that may increase the effects of cardiac glycosides. Other drugs such as beta-2 sympathomimetics and saxamethonium may potentiate the effects of digoxin. Several drugs decreases digoxin plasma levels such as antacids, cholesteramine, phenytoin, metoclopramide, ion exchange resins, cholestipol, etc. Digoxin should be stopped for at least 48 hours before elective DC cardioversion, otherwise ventricular fibrillation may be precipitated. If cardioversion is required, the initial energy level should be low, such as 10 to 25 joules, and increased if necessary. Exclusion of digoxin toxicity is necessary prior to cardioversion. Treatment of digoxin toxicity Correct predisposing causes, discontinue digoxin, correct potassium abnormalities, and other precipitants as discussed above. Gastric lavage may be considered. However, gastric lavage may increase vagal tone, and this may cause further bradycardia or cardiac arrest. Treatment of digoxin-induced arrhythmias For ventricular arrhythmias, treatment options include lidocaine, phenytoin, and magnesium sulfate. The dose for lidocaine is 1 to 2 mg per kg IV. Phenytoin is a class 1b antiarrhythmic and it blocks sodium channels. It reduces normal pacemaker activity and augments conduction through the conducting system, especially when this has become depressed by digoxin. The dose is 0.5 to 1.5 mg per kg IV. The dose for magnesium sulfate is 2 grams infused over 10 to 15 minutes, followed by IVI 72 millimoles over 24 hours. For supraventricular arrhythmias, treat with beta blockers. Symptomatic bradyarrhythmias may be treated with atropine, 35 to 70 mcg per kg IV, or cardiac pacing. Cardiac pacing is preferred to infusions of catecholamines, which may precipitate further arrhythmias. Electrical cardioversion should be avoided as they may produce severe arrhythmias. Digoxin specific antibody fragments. It is indicated in life threatening digoxin induced arrhythmias or cardiac arrest, plasma digoxin levels of more than 20 micrograms per liter or uncontrolled hyperkalemia due to digoxin. Mechanism of action Digoxin-specific antibody fragments are IgG fragments. Digoxin is bound more avidly by FAB than by its receptor, thus digoxin is effectively removed from its site of action. Inactive digoxin FAB complex is removed from the circulation by the kidneys. The dose for acute digoxin overdose is 80 mg, repeat if necessary, titrated against clinical effect. For chronic digoxin poisoning, the dose is 40 mg, repeat after 60 minutes if there is no response. Digoxin toxicity may recur beyond 24 hours. For cardiac arrest, the dose is 40 mg times 5 by rapid IV injections, repeat if required. For other cardiac glycoside poisoning, the dose is 80 mg, repeated if necessary, titrated against effect. Adverse effects of Digoxin-specific antibody fragments includes hypokalemia, hypersensitivity, anaphylaxis, especially on re-exposure to digoxin-specific FAB, and exacerbation of AF or heart failure. Digoxin levels will rise post-administration of the immune FAB as the assays will measure both free and FAB-bound digoxin. Ask for the digoxin-free level for more accurate serum monitoring. These are my references. Thank you.